Okay, I think I'll get started just so we're not uh, not keeping anyone too long or delaying anyone who might have other things planned. So um, welcome. My name is Chris Rogers. Um, I'm the Student Recruitment and Outreach Manager here at the University. Um, part of my responsibility is, is going out to schools and colleges when we're able to, uh, going out and meeting lots of different uh, prospective students and parents and teachers uh, and talking about Chichester and supporting students through lots of different aspects of um, the application process and one of those being quite early on in the process which is um, choosing courses uh, choosing universities and bits and pieces we're really excited to have this series of uh, series of webinars it's um it's nice to be able to still support students um in, in this in this virtual world we find ourselves in at the moment so um as i said um meeting will be recorded so um, we'll be able to send that to other other people we will blur any names and bits and pieces um, and any questions please feel free to pop them in the chat box um, as we go along there will be um, people manning the chat box and making sure we catch everyone's questions so today's webinar is uh, is that all important question is why choose Chichester so I'm going to give you an overview of the Chichester experience and as I said we have Rosie and Chris who are both student ambassadors um, for us here at the University of Chichester so they're here to all also share little uh, little bits and pieces, little little anecdotes about their um, time as a student as well, and why they ultimately chose Chichester. So, uh, why do students choose Chichester? So. Um, you can see there are quite a few kind of overarching ideas and overarching things that I'm going to talk about throughout this presentation. Um, albeit those are the kind of top headlines, there are many, many different reasons why I'm sure uh, Rosie and Chris will also share going further forward as to why they choose it. But ultimately, one of the biggest things we find is, is students choose us because of our size. So um, down at the University of Chichester, we are um, about five and a half thousand students at full capacity. We are one of the um, smaller institutions in, in the country. We're not the smallest, but we are one of the smaller institutions. And due to our size, um, we then also have quite a high staff ratio, which um, it, it affords us to have that supporting environment, affords us to have um, a lot of staff kind of ratio to the students. And ultimately that impacts on kind of the experience the students get. Our community sounds like um, sounds like a bit of a, a, a cheesy tagline, but our community is really important to us. We have um, a very, uh, I suppose, in, in, ingrained sense of community at the University of Chichester. Everyone kind of knows everyone is probably a way of putting it. One of the things I know that comes up time and time again when you ask students what's the best thing about um, the University of Chichester is that um, you kind of know everyone or you can't cross campus without bumping into someone you know. And then when you equally say to them, what's the worst thing about the University of Chichester? They might also tell you you can't cross campus without um, without bumping into someone you know when you need to kind of pass and get on really quickly. So um, that that sense of community is really important. Everyone's there. The support is, is immense um, and everyone looks out for each other. Our teaching staff, which I will come on to a little bit later on, but um, ultimately what I want to say about our teaching staff is that um, our teachers are involved in the research that the university does and also um, our researchers are involved in the teaching that happens at the university. So all that um, goes on behind the, behind the scenes in research teams influences and impacts on the teaching um, that, that students receive um, and it, it, it's there at the cutting edge of, of what they're doing and it feeds back into um, feeds back into the, what they're learning and those important skills that they leave university with. Um, our support staff, so another thing, as I said, the community, the support and um, behind the scenes, there are a lot of different support staff who are there um, working for students, for their academic abilities, for their um, health and wellbeing. And I'll, I'll come on to come on to a slide about those bits and pieces shortly. Um, our history, so you may have seen on numerous slides and um, prospectuses and bits and pieces, we are over 180 years old as an institution. Um, our history goes way back to to teaching um, and started as um, yeah started as a teacher training college and then over time um, the the university has developed um, both Bognor Regis and the Chichester campuses have come together um, where they were separate uh, entities years gone by um, and then in years uh, in years gone by they've, the the course portfolio has developed and has con continued to develop to this day um, and then something that also is really important is guaranteed accommodation so there is a, a an accommodation um accommodation presentation webinar coming up in a couple of weeks time as well so you'll be able to get a lot more information about that but it's about that guaranteed accommodation for those students who uh, apply by the deadline of 15th of january and choose us as their one of, as their firm choice 
So um, hopefully the reason why you're you're here for this webinar is that one of these subject areas is probably something that you're interested in. Um, it's probably um, probably what's brought you to us by doing searches on uh, systems such as UCAS and bits and pieces. Um, and you can see we have a really varied course kind of menu. So um, we have some some key kind of focuses around education and sport, but ultimately we have things like our, our business school, humanities, um, and soon to be launching things like our nursing and physiotherapy, which came online um, in the last year. So um, yeah, some, some exciting developments and some other things that we, um, we have have run for a number of years and and some some more unique courses as well in things like games design and esports so um yeah some 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 really different interesting courses some of you may att may have attended our recent virtual open days um, and and gathered some more information about um those subjects we had some some live sessions um and the website is still live should you want to go and watch some of the the different um recordings of, of academics and lecturers talking about these subject areas and what you would do um, on a day-to-day -day basis in these courses um so uh, a few slides here about the different accolades that um, we have here at the University of Chichester. We're, we're, we're really proud of um, the work that all of our staff, all of our students do um, and, and, and the community that we have um, developed and also that, as I say, the awards that we have um, gained over time here at the University of Chichester. One of our most recent ones, I'm uh, very, very proud to, to have this one, is the Guardian University Guide for, for this year, so 2021. We have been named as one of the top 30 UK UK universities. They take um, lots and lots of different metrics, lots of different measures um, to do with student success, student happiness, um, all different courses, all the different departments, um, and ultimately come out um, with, with a league table of um, about 120 plus universities. And we've been named in the, in the top 30 here uh, at the University of Chichester, which is really exciting. Um, another one, so the the Sunday Times, the the Good University Guide, probably one of the more common ones that a lot of people hear about. Um, it's one of the ones that a lot of people go to. Um, we have been rated in in, in the top fifty, um, and we're also among the top ten in the southeast of the southeast of the country. And as you can see, also some further further rankings there for for the best UK university. Um, 14th for our teaching quality, which again, really important to us, as I said earlier, our, our teachers are researchers and our researchers are also teachers. So that also, uh, kind of, I think, represents the, the ethos that we put into developing um, those core skills on the courses that students attend for um, and, and those cutting edge industry skills as well, which we're which we're um, which we're developing and they're leaving to go on to find um, find those careers in the world of work and also student experience. So comes into again a lot of different things. We work closely with our students union um, uh, to make sure that students get that experience across the board from everything from their academic experience to um, to their, their social experience to the support they receive as well whilst they're here um, studying. Um, more more accolades so the national student survey this is something that final year students complete each year um, and they they answer a series of questions um, about their not only their departments but about their time and their experience here at the university um, and then again this is uh, this is graded across the country it's done as a as a whole institution and then it's also um, done on department basis as, as well so you can see there um, really proud of um, the first in psychology for academic support and the learning community as as well. Early childhood studies is high up there with the student satisfaction. Our musical theatre course, which is really, really popular, 100% um, student satisfaction again there. So lo lots of different, um, lots of different um, metrics and readings from that, but they're some of our, our top line ones. But you can you can find many more of them if you if you do a do a search online uh, for national student sur survey statistics. Uh, the What Uni Student Choice Awards, again, another one there. So fifth best higher education institution for courses and lecturers. Again, students really highly rate their lecturers. As I said earlier, um, we have a high um, student to staff ratio or staff to student ratio, rather, should I say around that way. Um, so our, our lecturers are really there for the students within the times that they're there to deliver and also outside of the course when they have times for students to have tu uh, tutorials and bits and pieces as well. So it's about them supporting them 
um, as a as a as an individual student and not just a number on, on roll as such. So they get to know the students, they get to know their names, um, they'll get to know um, the faces. If students aren't in lectures, um, then they genuinely will be will be concerned as to where those students are. Not uh, not just because they're missing the lectures, but actually from a from a, uh, a welfare point of view as well. Times Higher Education, so Student Experience Survey, some more accolades there. So uh, overall student experience. Again, speaks speaks kind of volumes, but good personal relationships with teaching staff. Fourth for student welfare, which is really important. Um, that comes down to the support systems we have in place. It comes down to things like our accommodation team, our 24 hour support um, for students uh, around that as well. Um, lots of different factors. The accommodation, as I say, you'll hear more about in a couple of weeks time on the, the, the webinar for that as well. Um, environment on campus, we, we're very lucky to have a, a kind of host of different gardeners who keep up our campuses and the, the work teams around those keep us keep us in some some beautifully tended um, gardens and bits and pieces as well, which makes for a for a, a much nicer environment to work and study in. Um, and finally, one of the uh, one of the last kind of accolades is the teaching excellence framework. So um, based on evidence that's kind of available, which looks at things like teaching quality, um, outcomes for students, um, looking kind of where students end up after they've finished at university, where these where these graduates go on to. Um, and we were we were graded up there the, the, out of the three levels, so bronze, silver and gold, we were graded up there in the, the silver. I think um, I think we were very very close to being just into a gold, but unfortunately it was uh, enough that it kept us in the silver. But um, they are they are going to be doing these every every so many years to to regrade universities as well. So hopefully we'll be we'll be aiming to improve that next time to, to push us into the into the gold as well. So um, I would imagine most of you are, are, are already starting to think about some of you may already um, be well aware of the courses you want to do. You may be well aware of where you want to study or the area you want to study. But universities are all very, very different. Um, are kind of this is a bit more general across the board. Um, facilities obviously are all very different. You can see from kind of the, the four key images on there. Uh, some of our kind of facilities, as I said, quite a green campus. Um, we've got some old buildings and we've equally got um, a real blend where um, it goes to uh, the, the the brand new building down on Bogner, which is our um, our tech park, our multi-million pound tech park, which is a, a kind of amalgamation of engineering at one end of the building and creative and digital technologies. So film and media and those sorts of things as well in, in the other end of the building. Um, student life, student life, something that um, I'm sure parents aren't so uh, aren't so, aren't always so keen to to look into, but students are always looking into the the students' union, the nightlife, the local area. What what is there around for students to also do in their social time? So um, we have a really active students' union um, who uh, put on lots of different nights for students. Um, it's lots and lots of different things that um, encourage students to uh, to meet others and get involved in student uh, societies and clubs and bits and pieces as well from from sport to um, aerial uh, aerial acrobatics um, to even I think we've even previously had things like a, um, a Harry Potter Quidditch society and all sorts as well so lots of different things the course ultimately Pitt students are going to be looking at the courses, um, looking at the grades that they require and looking at the sorts of things they're going to learn on their courses. Um, and they're going to be doing that by looking at things like the websites, so UCAS, um, yeah, the university guides, those sorts of things. How they teach. So um, as I said um, earlier, so um, lecturers, uh, researchers, who, who are who are students ultimately taught by? So who, who are the people delivering those things? Is it taught in small groups? Is it taught in large groups? Is it um, great tiered lecture theatres? Um, at the University of Chichester, we only have one um, one room probably on, uh, on on kind of each campus that's anywhere above um, 100 students. The most uh, most kind of rooms on our campus are small kind of classroom college style um, rooms where students are are taught in in smaller seminars and smaller lectures um, where again the, the the, the lecturers, the academics will know the students, they'll know them by name, they won't just be a number, they'll actually um, actually know them, um, know their names and be able to talk to them. 
Um, where students go on to, so um, something that you'll see in different metrics on different league tables is, is um, the stats of um, percentages of students who go on to um, actual careers in the areas that they're studying whether they go on to um, study, uh, whether they go on, sorry, to to particular wage brackets, bits and pieces like that. Um, size and number of students. So as I said, we're a relatively small university compared to some where um, we're at the smaller end. And then you will have um, places, uh, for example, further up country like Manchester, where um, their universities can be in the 30 odd thousand students. We're about five and a half thousand students and they're yeah, 30 odd thousand students. So um, we, we are able to, like I say, build that more community feel um, where they're based. So I would imagine some people might want to travel uh, as we had there, someone from Dubai, and then we'll also have students who are, are keen to to commute in or, um, or or travel in each time that they have university. Uh, campus or city university. So we are a campus based university. We have two different campuses. We have one here in uh, one in Chichester and also one in um, one in Bognor Regis. Um, uh, they're, they're connected by um, very good transport links so you can drive between them in about 20 minutes or you can also use the intercampus bus which students are able to um, use with their student card for free um, and travel between campuses uh, for, for different things for, for courses or, or for um, social aspects as well. Um, few pictures of different campus uh, our campus and different facilities so um, as I said we're um, very lucky uh, to have a, a real blend of, of, of old and new some of our buildings on the Bognor Regis campus uh, are, are what you would probably call mansion houses um, so um, listed buildings but when you step inside them you wouldn't necessarily know that because they are very uh, very modern very current the business school um, uh, business school used to be in in that building that's um, second in from the left which is called our dome um, and it's set up very much inside to 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 look like um, a kind of a, a, a place of work um, with different kind of facilities for meetings and all sorts of stuff as well inside so lots of different things you've got our, our, our multi-million pound tech park which has things like um, a, a sound stage green screen facilities um, uh, kind of industry standard sound editing software um, and then the other end of the building is the the engineering suite which has um, many different machineries lathes um, 3d printers um, workshops and, um, and and big spaces where students can work on large-scale um, projects as well we have our our uh, our theatre on campus um, in Chichester where we have um, regular performances as well when we're allowed to um, in, in any kind of normal year so students are able to use that space for their own work they're able to um, watch visiting productions all sorts of different things like that we have our dance studios um, uh, we have climbing facilities lots of different sports facilities as well um, and you can see that bottom uh, right hand picture is is, is um, our relatively new a few years old um, music block as well which was redeveloped to provide much more practice space for students as well. How we teach. So um, as I said earlier, um, we are able to teach in small groups. We're able to, to teach in small personal lectures, uh, small personal seminars, um, and lecturers are able to get to know the students much more than, than a big tiered lecture theatre. Um, lots and lots of discussion and, to, uh, and debate, lots of hands-on, more experiential based learning, um, and um, students are able to, to discuss with each other, to discuss with lecturers, um, and also discuss with, with visiting kind of experts experts and professionals who come in from the fields that they're studying. As I've said probably more than once is our professors and our readers, so anyone who teaches also researches and anyone who researches also teaches. They are still involved in the industries that they are teaching about. They are making sure and they are um, current in the things that they are teaching. Um, there are, there are lots of opportunity for one-to-one -one support, not only from academics and lecturers, um, but also um, for for um, issues outside of potentially the academic side of things. So for well-being, for uh, mental health support and those sorts of things as well, which I'll talk about on another slide. Um, and as I said, that hands-on practical learning where, where, where courses allow it to, um, we are very much about students being um, able to experience firsthand the things that we're teaching as well. 
Is there anything, Rosie or Chris, you wanted to add at this point about some of your lectures or how you teach um, uh, and then the courses that you're on, Rosie or Chris? I can't see Chris now. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so everything that's going on, it's quite boring that we've been able, been able to um, uh, come back come and have face-to-face -face lessons. Um, and yeah, from my experience, I'm on a sport, um, sport course and we've had loads of experts come in and give us a bit of background for where they've come from. Um, and really just reassured and um, like solidified the knowledge that we already had and what they were teaching us. And it was, yeah, it was quite um, quite good to have different people come in and give us their experiences from the profession and things like that. Thanks, Rosie. Is Chris there? I did see him online, but I'm not sure. Oh, he is there. Yeah. Hi, Chris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, no. Um sort of similar to that really like the the lecturers because I'm on I'm on the theatre course um, and the lecturers there are all really dedicated they're all they're all quite um, approachable you can you can talk to all of them and the way in which that because we've also been able to carry on um, face to face learning and that's just really helped build that sense of we can go to them about anything basically and um, through that we you just learn so much because they're still in the business now like every single one of our lecturers is still an active theatre maker so it's constantly sort of that discovery together I think a lot of the time so yeah thanks guys that's really good sorry what I should have said Rosie and Chris can you just say whereabouts you, you you're from in the UK as well whether you've traveled far for university yeah from South London, so I'm about an hour and a half hour from Chichester, so not too far. Uh, yeah, I'm from Stoke-on-Trent originally, so it's about a four hour uh, drive for me, depending on traffic. So, Thanks guys, I'll uh, get you to chime back in shortly as well. Um, so student support, one of the things I've mentioned a few times and um, uh, something that we really probably ourselves on um, is, is the, the high level of student support we have. So we have um, ultimately the, the academic side of support. So students can get um, support with any number of things from structuring essays um, to how to use particular pieces of software for their courses. Um, it could be how to reference and write bibliographies. Lots and lots of different things that um, are on offer for them to do. They can have one to one academic skills appointments. They can do them as group sessions. Yeah, lot, lots of different parts to that. Um, we have um, a, a kind of multi-faith chaplain. She um, she is regularly around on both campuses um, and meets with students um, either for private private prayer or contemplation. Um, she'll um, deliver different services um, at different points of the year as well. So um, there is someone there from a faith background as well for that support for students. We have specific disability and dyslexia services. So um, uh, I know that they get involved from uh, from the get go. So if you are um, if you are in that kind of category and you you know you will need extra support coming to university, do get in touch with us. Um, we are able to support you through that process um, and also ensure that things are in place as you get towards university, so that we can make sure you start university with the best support in place. Um, we have our student health service, so we have um, student uh, we have nurses who are on site for students to uh, be able to get support from as well, um, so they can attend that for 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 uh, many different things. Uh, to do with their physical health. Um, we have um, the student wellbeing advice as well. So that side of um, student mental health, something that's really important, something that um, we, uh, we, we regularly run campaigns with on campuses is ensuring that students um, share those times when they're stressed, get people to talk to. They can book in for one-to-one for -one appointments. Um, they can go to drop-ins and check-ins as well. We have our student money service and our student money advisors. So those all important people about helping um, students to, to budget um, and to um, be able to uh, kind of access pots of money that they might not necessarily have known about before as well. Um, and then you can see right at the bottom as well, those bits about mental health and um, the you talk counselling service as well that we have. So lots and lots of different forms of student support to ensure that students are um, supported to make the most of their time at university um, and also supported at those times when they really do need um, people there to help them. Um, accommodation, I won't go too much into detail on this one. Um, it's um, 
it's something that will come further down the line when um, a couple of weeks time when we have our, our accommodation talk as well. But um, kind of top headlines, um, that's some of the buildings, that's some of the, the places that you you might choose to 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 rent a room in. So we've got um, 24 hour security on site um, and that's someone there that um, they may they may laugh. They may um, they may rip you if you lose your room key at silly o'clock in the morning. But ultimately, they're there to support you. They're ultimately there to help you um, uh, get back into your room and make sure you're safe on campus. Um, um, when um, things like the library are open 24 hours a day for um, for study, they they will even walk you back across to your accommodation across campus if you're not so sure on walking on your own and things like that. They are there again, part of the community um, to make you feel safe and secure. We have on campus and off campus halls. So um, we have um, ones where there are a couple of minutes from lecture spaces and some students like that. They can roll out of bed and be in a lecture in a few minutes. Or we have other ones off campus where they uh, where they either have to kind of walk in or commute in on the buses for, for a short distance. So um, best of both worlds and, and different different ones um, kind of uh, meet different people's expectations. En suite and shared bathrooms, so uh, kind of alleviates when I talk to students in schools, alleviates some of the fears that they have to share a bathroom with lots of different people. Uh, they can choose to have uh, uh, their own bathroom. Um, so yeah, kind of a choice for different areas. Lots of living in communal areas, so students can, uh, can obviously socialise outside of um, their lectures and bits and pieces. Um, shared kitchens so spaces where students can cook their own uh, cook their own meals as i said earlier that accommodation guarantee so if students choose um choose us as one of their uh, one of their main choices and their their firm um, and they've applied by the 15th of january then we will um guarantee them a room in accommodation there's more information about that on the website though at um, on our accommodation pages the 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 formal wording of our accommodation guarantee and then we also have catered and self catered, catered options so depending on whether students are uh, the next Gordon Ramsay or, or whether they uh, need a little bit of support to, to, to cook their own meals, there's options there for them. Um, just a bit top headline, I won't go through too much of this because I'm sure people can join the accommodation webinar if they want to, but we have, um, so we have uh, over a thousand rooms on and off campus for students to be able to, uh, to access, generally in their first year, but um, some students will stay on kind of through other years of, of their university as well. Um, living experience. So um, one of the things people always kind of think of Chichester, uh, a Roman town uh, or Roman city rather, I should say, um, quite oldie worldy. We've got lots of different things going on in the city, lots of um, lots of culture and also lots of things um, not 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 too far away, really, that you can travel to as well. So you've got things like the, the city centre is a 10 to 15 minute walk from campus. And I'm sure um, Rosie and Chris would echo this, but quite often uh, in between lectures, students will, will pop into town and bits and pieces or um, they might live somewhere near the town and and also uh, and then come up to campus for their lectures and bits and pieces lots of different shops and stuff as well um, we have goodwood which i'm sure you've heard of um, there's kit there's a course have, um, or I should say in the summer, in, in a normal summer, um, they will um, will run uh, music nights and bits and pieces as well up there. So lots of different things going on for students to get involved in. We have the Chichester Festival Theatre, which is um, a flagship theatre and it's also um, sister theatre of the, um, I think it's the National Theatre in London. So quite often we'll have um, performances come to um, come to the festival theatre that are being tested to go back into back into London for longer runs and bits and pieces like that. Um, our, gradu our graduation also takes place here or has taken place here and, and, and also uh, kind of between there and the um, cathedral as well. We have um, Chichester Gate, which is a kind of leisure complex. You've got cinema, trampoline park, lots of different things down there. Um, it's next to one of our halls, but it's about a 25 minute walk from campus. So again, lots of social activities down there. Um, we have West Witterings, which is um, one of, uh, I mean, I'm probably a little biased, but one of the most beautiful beaches and you could kind of be anywhere on a sunny day when you're sat on the Witterings um, and the, 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 yeah, the heat's on you and the lovely sand underneath your feet as well. Um, we have um, the Fishbourne Accommodation, which is one of the off-campus ones, which is about uh, yeah about a 35 minute walk from campus. And it's right next to one of the, the bigger shops in the area, the big Tesco. 
Um, and then Stockbridge, as I said, so near the leisure complex, about a 25 minute walk from campus. It's right next to the train station um, and it's 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 more of a it's we call it our student village. So it's um it's kind of lots of different rooms and blocks all in kind of one area. Um, the Bognor Regis living experience. So again, um, lots of different things going on down in Bognor Regis. Um, you are a matter of minutes from uh, the beach. Um, at this campus, as it says down there, 915 steps from the beach. So you can obviously go down there in your spare time as well. And lots of students choose to. Um, you've got um, things like the Hotham Park, which is a, a really nice place with uh, a kind of pizza restaurant and all sorts inside. You've got um, uh, the Regis Centre, which is um, where some of our musical theatre students put on different shows. Um, You've got um, the Picture Dome Cinema, which is uh, a very old cinema, but also um, a very cheap cinema, which students love to go along to um, uh, and, and get bargain tickets to different shows as well. So lots and lots of different things going on on our Bognor Regis campus as well. Um, Students Union I briefly touched on. This is going to be um, the subject of, of another webinar which um, is coming up in a few weeks time but to give you kind of some headline figures about um, why Chichester and why our Students Union. So they have um, on average in a year about 27 different sport or 27 plus different sports clubs um, currently from anything to, to do with like American football, basketball, um, we've had horse riding clubs, um, we've had uh, winter sports clubs, all sorts of different things. So they change a bit year on year depending on interest, but ultimately they're kind of the, the standard sports are there year on year in year out. And then we also have things like 40 plus um, societies. So um, everything from we had an Afro-Caribbean society, we've had comedy, we've had aerial theatre, as I said earlier. So um, the ribbons and the kind of loops in the ceiling that people do as well. So, um, yeah, and again, um, something that changes year on year, depending on interest, students can start their own societies, come to the SU with, with their ideas. Uh, and once they've got enough people, they can start different societies as well. Um, did you guys want to chime in anything on the Students' Union or your experience of clubs and societies? Yeah, I'll go first. So um, I play for the football team at the university. Um, and for me, that was part of the reason why I went to Chai, because I uh, researched into the level in which they played um, and they play in a really high level um, against other universities. And for me, it's really made my experience because you meet so many different people you wouldn't have necessarily met on your course. Um, so, yeah, no, without a doubt, it's been a massive part for me. Um, and I recommend joining a sports team or society or something like that. Thanks, Rosie. Um, yeah, I definitely echo like just joining up to some uh, something and uh, the people that you meet through that that you wouldn't meet normally because I um, uh, I joined the Film Combat Society and then through that, through people I met um, through that, I ended up working on a short film um, in the spring. So yeah, it's, it's a really nice community feel um, through there and just see what's out there, see what you can dip into. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. Thanks, Chris. So um, with that kind of in mind, um, that is kind of brings us to the end of, of our formal presentation um, and I kind of open the floor up really for any questions that people might want to put forward in, in the chat box. Please feel free to ask anything that you're, you're thinking about. Obviously, the students have got their perspective to answer on. I'm just going to kind of end it really on saying to Rosie and Chris, a bit probably a bit thrown into the deep end, but ultimately, what was what was it that made you choose Chichester? Why did you settle on 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 this this particular place? Um, so for me, um, I think the one to one support the university offers was um, a massive part in why I decided to come to Chichester. Um, they they offer an open door policy specifically, which allows you to basically go to lecturers as and when you need to. You don't really necessarily have to book and wait in advance to go and meet them. Um, they're always keen and happy to see you as and when. Um, and I found that throughout my three years that they've really supported me and helped me um, yeah, develop. And because obviously university is a big step, but you also want that support side of things, um, which is reassuring. And yeah, that was probably one of the main reasons for me. Thanks, Rosie. Uh, yeah, for me, it was the course and the um, the overall experience I knew I could have here because I knew that um, throughout going through the three years, 
that I'd be able to pick up so much from so many different people, like not just the lecturers, but also everyone else that you meet. So I'd say for me, it was definitely um, the whole, like the whole package, because it's a very pleasant campus, it's a very pleasant place to be as well. So it's a really nice place to learn and experience and do all these things and to live, a nice place to live. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Rosie. So I've got a question here that's come in. So is finding work around the uni easy? So um, Chris or Rosie, did you want to chime in first on that one? Yes, yeah, so obviously you can be a student ambassador like myself and Chris, or um, I have friends that work in loads of the shops in town because there are so many or the supermarkets that are on the outskirts. Um, there's loads of yeah possibilities of jobs. You can also work at the SU or um, the student shop. Um, and they're really allocating around your lecturers and give you shifts as and when. So, yeah, no, there are plenty of options for jobs and part time opportunities. Excellent. Thanks, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of uh, employers around here know that they're going to be employing a lot of students. So uh, I know people who only work like once on the weekend and the SU is quite flexible and good as well. I had a mate who was like, um, who said, oh, I need to get a new job. A week later, I went in the SU and saw him working behind the bar. So, brilliant. Thanks, Chris. Um, and also, it's it's worth noting at this point as well that we have our um, our careers and employability service in the university who are um, regularly updating jobs boards. They run um, employment fairs throughout the year as well. Um, some of the biggest employees in the area, such as, um, say, the theatre or Butlins, those sorts of places, um, are, are regularly taking on students as well. So you'll, you'll find lots of different um, opportunities um, in the Freshers' Fair as well. We have quite a lot of people who come along um, and, and, and come along to specifically recruit students for their year as well. So, yeah, lots of different opportunities to um, for employment. Are there any other questions? I'll, uh... oh, I can see someone writing, that's cool. At that moment of waiting for the message to pop up. Um, do ask us anything. We really are here to answer any questions at all that you that you might have about Chichester, um, whether that's about the, the university, the area, courses, all sorts of bits and pieces. So Ethan's just asked, are applications going to be treated differently due to COVID this year? So um, I would presume by um, you mean your UCAS application, Ethan? Um, I wouldn't say they're they're treated differently. Um, we have um, the same um, entry requirements and bits and pieces. Um, full information about the kind of admission side of things and entry requirements are available on our website, and and you'll also find contact details specifically for for the teams that deal with with um, applications as well. We do have um, for for those who have potentially faced kind of difficult circumstances or have had um, particularly challenging um, challenging times. Um, we do have what we call our compact. So you can go to chai.ac.uk forward slash compact, um, and um, if you're if you're in in one of the more local areas, we do um, offer kind of support and um, kind of different entry requirements for that side of things as well. Would we receive any support on managing finance? So yes, um, good question. Um, we we do have our, our student money team, so um, they are there to um, teach you and help you and show you how to budget. They know lots of different um, apps that you can use. They will help you start find other kind of sources of um, sources of funding should you be able to access different bursaries. And we also have um, different bursaries available to do with household income as well. So so lots of different things. You can find all this information on the website again. So chai.ac.uk um, and forward slash finance for those ones. Um, if you are on a part time, a part, on a park course and therefore not eligible for student halls accommodation are there any student rental places companies websites okay yeah so good question so yes um you not only have the student halls accommodation through us that you're able to access um you can um you can use our accommodation service who will support you to um access um different accommodation um and almost um we have um 
a team who will um, recommend different places to view. You can find that on our website again. I'm going to refer you back to our website so I don't give any any wrong places, but um, there are um, recommend uh, recommendations and websites that we will recommend for you to be able to find um, almost, I suppose, want of a better word, accredited um, accredited landlords who who we we will will verify um our renting properties that are, are kind of fit for standard as well um so does the university help give us suggestions for scholarships etc so you can see steph's just popped in the uh, in the chat box there student money advice at chai.ac.uk um and um they will um they will be able to tell you the most up-to-date information about scholarships we have things like yeah so steph's pop there the gifted athlete scholarship program so if you're a particularly gifted athlete in certain fields then obviously you can access that um i did briefly mention that we have our, our household income bursary as well um but um student money advice is, is the best place to give you um, a much wider source of information on those sorts of things I can see someone else typing again, so I'll give them give them a minute to uh, to pop in any bits and pieces. In terms of actual student uh, student um, student finance, obviously you can use um, the government websites for for information about those sorts of things as well. Um, and Steph's just popped um, popped another link in there for you for the gifted athlete scholarship program as well which is uh, running in conjunction with our our um, student union so UCSU U University of Chichester Students Union I'm just waiting for waiting for any more questions to come through I hope that um, the session has been interesting for you today though and um, don't feel that um, once this presentation's finished, that's it. If you do want to um, do want to ask us other questions, you can uh, email us on uh, on a, on, on um, find email. Sorry, on the website to email us. Um, you can call up, and calls will be directed to the right team. Um, and you can also email us on um, outreach at chai.ac.uk, which um, you'll get responses from that as well. A team of people manage that email. Whilst just waiting for a couple of other questions that appear to be being typed, I'm just going to jump back to Rosie and Chris and uh, kind of ask one or two more questions. Um, Chris, I'll go with you first. What do you what do you like most about your course? What would you say is the, the top thing on your list? Put you on the spot there. Uh, yeah. Um, I'd say it is the the people. Um, as much as anything else, because like in my in my uh, line of work, um, like with theatre it really is the people that you're with that sort of makes or breaks it for you and um i've been quite fortunate to know people in the year in the years above me and become quite good friends with them um friends with pretty much everyone in my year um and because of that and because like i say the lectures are quite um talkative and you can really get to know them as people as, and they're not just lecturers um it just when you make work it's just really positive like it's such a nice community feel and I feel that that kind of like overspills because we have people from different departments that come in and watch um the stuff that we make usually when we're not under it, these circumstances um and that's been yeah I'd, I'd say that's that's what I enjoy the most is the people excellent thanks Chris Rosie same question for you so yeah like I said I do a sports degree so physical education in the secondary is um, and for me, the best part has been the fact that we do so much practice and so much um, actual play and sport. And being a sports student is obviously I'm really keen about it. Um, and I, what I found is that the lectures are really good at is teaching theory through practice. Um, I'm a visual learner. So I, and practically, I enjoy being able to interpret it through the practice itself. And it's I found it so much more easy, easier to understand. Get so much more able to say I play sport pretty much every day of the week. Um, but yeah, no, it's very practical, hands on. Um, and yeah, the lecturers are willing to get involved. Yeah, it's a lot of fun from my experience. Excellent. Thanks, Rosie. I can see a couple more questions. They haven't come through yet. Um, 